Hi everyone, thank you so much for joining me on this video where we are talking about an introductory to Algebra 1 topic, the distributive property. We're going to be taking a look at the distributive property in three different forms, all dealing with multiplying though and distributing values and drawing lots and lots of arrows. So stay along with me on this video. Feel free to obviously pause, write things down, press play, try things out on your own, or just follow along. All right, let's see where we go. All right, so distributive property. The distributive property means that I'm taking one value and I'm multiplying it to other values inside of parentheses or grouping symbols. So here, this is saying the value of A is going to be multiplied by B plus C. So this value of A is getting multiplied by this expression of B plus C. And when I multiply A times everything inside these parentheses, I multiply a times B, so you can see I have that one additional, that first arrow rather, A times B, which is AB, because we don't know what A and B are, so we just keep the variables there. And then I do A times C, it's positive C, which is positive AC. That's what my result would be. When we use the distributive property, the value that we're multiplying outside of the parentheses gets distributed to everything inside the parentheses. If I can simplify it with nice numbers, of course, I'm going to do that. But here for this example, it was just variables. Let's take a look at four quick practice problems. OK, so my first one says negative 5 times 5x plus 7. So I need to do negative 5 times 5x, which is negative 25x. And then I do negative 5 times positive 7. Notice I didn't bring a sign down. I will never teach you to bring signs down. I will just say distribute multiply it, put that number down. Don't ever bring signs down, it gets you in trouble. Okay, negative five times seven is negative 35. And that's it, my friends, that's the whole answer. So let's try the next one. Four times two X is eight X. Four times three Y is positive 12 Y. And four times 10 is 40. Next one, four times two X is eight X. 4 times 6 is 24. Negative 3 times x is negative 3x. Negative 3 times y is negative 3y. Negative 3 times 5 is negative 15. Again, notice I never brought down plus signs. We don't want double signs. We wouldn't want to write plus negative 3y, or we wouldn't want to write plus negative 15. It's just minus 15. Let's translate this word problem now. It says a family of 3. So three people in the family each buy two oranges X and five apples Y. So a family of three, so all three people in the family, they each buy two oranges X. So we're going to call that two X, five apples Y. So we're going to call that five Y. So three people are going to buy two oranges plus five apples. And if three people each buy this amount, the total amount would be 6x because 3 times 2x is 6x and then 3 times 5y is 15y. Now the biggest mistake I will always see students do, especially if they don't draw arrows, is usually students multiply the first term. What students usually do, the biggest mistake, is they leave the other term. They forget to distribute it. So it's a really good idea to draw arrows to make sure that we really get our full correct answer. Okay, now the next tab that I have here in my notes is that the distributive property can be not with just a plus sign, but with also a minus sign. We saw that in some of the other problems um, that there was a negative that we were distributing, but now we're going to have a negative inside the parentheses. The process is still the exact same. So a times b is ab. a times negative c is negative ac. Again, notice I did not bring down any signs, and I encourage you strongly not to do so. Okay, let's take a look at our next set of problems here. I just keep moving my face around. All right, let's go. 6 times 5x is 30x. 6 times negative 7 is a negative 42. Next one, negative 2 times 2x is negative 4x. Now be careful on this one. Negative 2 times negative 3y. So first of all, a negative times a negative is a positive. 
2 times 3 is 6, and then I have that y. Negative 2 times negative 10, a negative times a negative is a positive, and 2 times 10 is 20. 4 times 2x is 8x, 4 times negative 6, negative 24. Last one, negative 3 times x, negative 3x, negative 3 times negative y. A negative times a negative is a positive, so that's going to be plus 3y. Negative 3 times negative 5, a negative times a negative is a positive. At a lemonade stand, five cups are sold at $1.25 each, but each cup costs 50 cents to make. So now I want to set up a distributive property problem or expression here rather that represents this situation. So at a lemonade stand, five cups are sold. Now I'm going to multiply it by the price. The price of each cup is $1.25, right? So think about this for a moment. If you were trying to figure out the total price that you were going to be making, you, would, you sold five cups times $1.25. But it says here, each cup costs 50 cents to make. So I would, you know, make a dollar 25, but from every dollar 25 I made from my lemonade stand, I had to subtract 50 cents worth of the money to actually make the lemonade. Lemons, the sugar, the cups, the water, and so forth. So if I distribute this, five times a dollar 25, Okay, five times $1.25 is $6.25 I would have made. But then I have to subtract five times that 50 cents because that's how much it costs me to actually make the lemonade. So minus $2.50, and that would give me $3.75. All right, last one, last tab for the distributive property. Distributive property, in the previous two examples I showed you, or numbers over here and they were getting distributed like the number that was getting distributed was on the left and everything was getting sent to the right but that's not always the case it doesn't have to be that way the value that you could be distributing could actually be over here on the right hand side and i just distribute it that way instead so here if this entire expression of y plus z is getting multiplied by x this x is what's getting distributed it's getting sent to the y x times y is xy and x times z is xz. Some of my students, they even like to rewrite the problem. So if you wanted to rewrite this original problem and just put x in front, you totally could. You're going to get the same answer. All right, last tab here, guys. Let's take a look. So it says 5x minus 7 times 3. So notice I drew my arrows from the 3. So 3 times 5x is 15x. 3 times negative 7 is negative 21. 7 times 2x is 14x. 7 times 3y would be 21y. And 7 times negative 10 is negative 70. 4 times 2x is 8x. 4 times 6 is 24. Last one. 3 times x is 3x. 3 times negative y is negative 3y and three times negative five is negative 15. At a party, each person takes two slices of pizza, P, and three pieces of candy, C. There are 10 people. So two slices of pizza, P, so that's two P. Three pieces of candy, C, so that's three C. There's 10 people and they each take that amount, so 2p plus 3c multiplied by 10. So 10 people are each taking two pieces of pizza, two slices of pizza, and three pieces of candy. If I distribute this, 10 times 2p is 20p, and three times, I'm sorry, 10 times 3c is 30c, and that would be the expression for the total amount. Use the distributive property to rewrite and evaluate. So in Algebra 1, you would never be asked to do 7 times 82. That's obviously not an Algebra 1 problem. 4 times 53, 8 times 120. But what is the algebra problem is using the distributive property to break apart numbers and then use the distributive property to show the solution. So here, 
I could break apart 82 into two nice numbers that I know will multiply by 7. And really what I want to do is I want to break it apart by the tens place and the ones place. So 7 times 82 is really 7 times 80 plus 2. Kind of doing the opposite of combining like terms. I'm taking 82 and I'm breaking it apart. Now the reason why I would do this is because if I use the distributive property, I'm going to get my answer pretty quickly. Okay, if I do 7 times 80, I can do that in my head. 7 times 8 is 56. So 7 times 80 is 560. And then if I do 7 times 2 is 14. So this is really 560 plus 14. And I can mental math that. It's 574. Let's do the next same thing with the next one. 4 times 53. If I break apart the 53 into its tens place and its ones place, this would be 4 times 50 plus 3. I would distribute my 4 two times. So 4 times 50 is 200. 4 times 3 is 12. And 200 plus 12 is 212. Okay. Break apart 120. I would break up this apart into the hundreds and the tens. So 8 times 100 plus 20. 8 times 100 is 800. 8 times 20 is 160. And I get 960 as my total result. So this is using the distributive property to rewrite this basic multiplication problem and use the distributive property for it. Now, it doesn't have to be that we break apart by addition. It could be that we also break apart by subtraction. So I want to show you another method. Instead of calling 79, 70 plus 9, I could actually also break it apart as 80 minus 1. I can go up to the next number multiplied by 10 or 100, let's say, and then subtract. So imagine I did this. I rewrote 79 as 80 minus 1. Then 7 times 80 is 560. 7 times negative 1 is negative 7, and I end up with 553 as my result, 560 minus 7. Same thing here. If I broke apart 47, that breaks apart nicely into 50 minus 3, a nice number I can multiply, a nice number I can multiply. 4 times 50 is 200. 4 times negative 3 is negative 12. 200 minus 12, 188. Last one. What do you think you'd break up 990 into as a subtraction problem? If you said 1,000 minus 10, you're correct. And if I distribute this, it's going to work out really nicely. 8 times 1,000 is 8,000. 8 times negative 10 is negative 80. And then combine those together to get 7920. Pretty good. Last couple problems I have for us are just translating verbal and algebraic expressions. So I'm going to challenge you, as I read this, to write down what you think it is, and then we're going to distribute and combine some like terms here. First one, 6 times the sum of x and y increased by 4 times the difference of 5x and y. So I want you to write down what you think that would translate to. 6 times the sum of x and y increased by 4 times the difference of 5x and y. Six times the sum, we learned this in a previous lesson of mine, that if it said six times the sum, that sum of x and y goes in parentheses. Increased by four times the difference. So four times the difference, so that would be in parentheses a subtraction of 5x minus y. Now, we use our distributive property. Six times x is 6x. Six times y is 6y. Distribute that positive four. 4 times 5x is 20x, and 4 times negative y is negative 4y. Now we combine our like terms. Okay, so after we just distributed here, I'll go back and draw some arrows in for us. 6x and 20x give us 26x. 6y and negative 4y, 6 minus 4 is positive 2y. Good. Let's try this last one. 3 times the difference of 2x and 5y subtracted by 2 times the sum of 3x and 4y. Okay, so I want you to write down what you think that might look like. 3 times the difference of 2x and 5y. That's the first part. Then subtracted by 2 times the sum 
of 3x and 4y. 3 times the difference of 2x and 5y. This is what it should look like starting out. Subtracted by 2 times the sum of 3x and 4y. Let's go ahead and distribute that 3 out. So 3 times 2x, 3 times negative 5y. So that's 6x minus 15y. Now this part, watch out guys, you are distributing a negative 2. Not a positive 2, a negative 2. Negative 2 times 3x and then negative 2 times 4y. So negative 2 times 3x is negative 6x. Negative 2 times 4y is negative 8y. 6x and a negative 6x, what happens there? They become 0. So it's really just negative 15y minus 8y. A negative 15 minus 8 is negative 23. And that's it, guys. I hope this video was helpful for you. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope you tune into other videos of mine. Bye.